Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to the Ranger Rob Country Living Podcast. Yes, sir, Bob. It is awful in the studio <laughs> because uh, I have a puppy in here, and apparently <laughs> she, uh, she has a little problem. <laughs> and, uh, so, yeah. Blame so, that on that poor puppy. <laughs> my, my eyes are watering, but uh, she's uh, happily asleep behind me, but she... Uh, She's obviously been on the farm today. <laughs> <laughs> so welcome to the podcast, everybody. Um, I uh, see what we got. Who we got here? We got a J and D Pig Hobby Farmstead. We Hi, have everyone. Rev and uh, Rev sitting in the dark. And uh, I am. I need to go get a light. And then we have John Pearson from uh, Eugene, Oregon. Hey, yo, and yo. the first question of the day is: It's time for Ranger Rob shoutouts. Yes, this oh, actually, that's not that it. one. We'll do that. Question is, where is Rev today? Could he be in America? Could he be in another country or another state? Let's find out. All You're right. In the same place you were last last podcast. Yeah, in this. Is that right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, he is. Because I'm in. I am in a different vehicle. Yes, you oh, are. I don't know if that counts. I don't know what that counts as. Uh, but in the same spot van. You were. No, I'm not in the same spot, that's for sure. So are you in South Carolina? Where do you Carolina? got? You got a guess. You can't be. We're not playing games here. This isn't play detective. <laughs> yeah. um, I Sounds would say like North Carolina. Portable man game. North, <laughs> North Carolina. What you got, John? Yeah, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to narrow it down. I say you're home. All right, what do you say, Debbie? Uh, Virginia. What do you say there, uh, Ranger Rob? Seattle. <laughs> Seattle. <laughs> North Carolina. I hope. I, I hopefully you're never right on that one, really. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's too dark for for Seattle. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm at the house. I did switch into a different truck just to try to throw you guys off. But I am. But I am at the house. But last week I was in Carolina, but I was on a job site. If you remember, John, I don't think oh, yeah. I was. I don't think I was home. You have yeah. the same trees behind you as you did. Well, I bring those pine trees with me. Those those are mobile pine trees. Oh, okay. it's not a big deal. <laughs> that makes sense then. Not a, not a big deal. Not a big deal. <laughs> no, I do believe I was on job site. No, I was on the job site, but yeah, I was still. Were. I was. Yeah, you were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need you a are. light though. I'm, Where are you? The thing is, I am. I'm, was... in, I'm at my house. I'm at my house. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. I thought, I I, well, I, I I inadvertently lied to you guys earlier. Uh, the job I was supposed to be on got canceled. That's not And uh, so, uh, so, uh, well, you know, it was inadvertent. Uh, but uh, I'm at the house. Glad to be at the house right now. Yeah. <laughs> also, want to say yeah. uh, hello to uh, uh, John Smith from a small town tourist and hey, Jack Walsh. Hey, John. And uh, and the people hiding that we can't see, I uh, can't see. But welcome to the show. Uh, I haven't switched over the comments yet, but I'm going to also do shout out. It's time for Ranger Rob shout outs. Yes, this is the time we want to recognize businesses, websites, and services. Here's today's spotlights. All right, I'm going to start today because I was insulted. Oh no. <laughs> And I do have uh, a, I do have a shout out today. My shout out is for Steve Sparks. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve Sparks, he's uh, he's on the board of a uh, let's see the Idaho Pasture Pigs Breeders Association and also the registration thing. And I've been kind of dialoguing with him um, about my pigs because they didn't my two oh, sows didn't didn't uh, take so I I've got them back together. And he kind of says, well, you, your pigs are getting kind of big. <laughs> I'm like, are you saying my pigs are fat? <laughs> He's going, well, it could be a factor. Because <laughs> my, 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 Maggie is humongous. And uh, and uh, Sparky's not exactly small. And I'm kind of thinking, well, there might be a mechanical problem there. <laughs> So uh, Steve Sparks uh, recommended diets. So uh, 
I called Oprah Winfrey and uh, okay. I'm to, uh, <laughs> giving them gummies. I'm gonna. <laughs> No, I'm gonna put uh, put both of them on Weight Watchers, but um, so I think uh, um, I think I'm doing like six pounds of food a day for him, and he's suggesting I go down to two pounds. Oh, and really? One of the main meals Dang. in the morning or in the night is just hay or grass, and so uh, um, so their second meal of the day will be. Um, a oh, handful of hay that. every day. So, anyway, so apparently there is quite as much calories in the in that as compared to grains. So, uh, anyway, so my uh, pigs are going on a diet. <laughs> apparently, <laughs> apparently, I have oversized uh, pigs. Have you seen Esther? Her belly almost drags on the ground. And uh, by the way, if you guys uh, watched that, was it today? No, yes. Uh, yes, yeah. Uh, Wednesday's video, uh, we had small town tourists, which is in the chat right now, stop by. He I made it home. Didn't stay very long. So he I, said he's I, sorry. Well, I mean, you know, it might have been the pup tent I made him sleep in. But uh, <laughs> yeah, especially right there by the chickens. Come on, he yeah. couldn't get no sleep. It was the pigs. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> so uh yeah so we had a good time uh uh we talked a lot it was and of course it was 101 so if john hasn't noticed i'm trying my 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 luck at it doing was the short puppy gas. <laughs> <laughs> it was the puppy gas yes <laughs> um so i was gonna ask him a lot of questions about because he does a lot of shorts on uh on um uh, YouTube, so I thought, well, I'm going to start doing that because I've noticed the numbers are real good. So I've been learn teaching myself in the last few days what how to do shorts, and uh, I got to admit it's uh, been po uh, positive. So uh, we're going to start doing those a little uh, more often. And then the other thing I was going to bring up is um, uh, for shout outs is uh, Steve St besides Steve Sparks calling my my pigs fat. Um, <laughs> It's Terabon Hardware, and uh, and I'm going to actually be doing some filming for their store a little bit here just for uh, helping out because they're really good people. But uh, uh, a lot of people, I, I don't know the name, and I don't have the uh, the bottle here in, uh, in here, but um, he suggested like two years ago, I keep, you know, if you have property like we do here, you get a lot of red ants, and they'll just put heels, you know, here and there, and they're kind of irritating. Anyway, I went to his store once and I uh, asked him, what's the magical thing to get rid of red ants? And he showed me this bottle. And it's like $17 for this bottle. But you just put a little bit in the bottle, add water to it. It's kind of milky colored. And uh, it can be used. And, and all you do is spray the top of the ant pile uh, just around it uh, within the parameter. And the next day, they're gone. I mean, it works every time. And wow. It's amazing. It's like so... Uh, uh, let's put it this way: at Terabon Hardware, they know what they got as products. If, if I would have gone to Home Depot, I probably would have gone home with Raid or something. So, uh, <laughs> um, one is good store. Two, it's a local store. And then uh, my message to everybody is: uh, support your local stores, and uh, uh, they'll take good care of you. It doesn't mean that they're always the cheapest, but it means that they. Uh, they're going to work a little harder to, to get you to come back. So, And they do yeah, give military that's, that's discount. Nice. What's that? They do give military discount. Oh, I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah. Huh. I wonder if he gives senior discounts. <laughs> they do that, too. Uh, I think they do. Wait a minute. I haven't done <laughs> Okay, I'm mad at him now. <laughs> You're insulted Excellent. again. Twice Actually, in one day. we do a lot of stuff together. <laughs> um, uh, he also carries our uh, Ranger Raw poopy bags. So, uh, yeah. Good oh, there you go. So that I did not know. Any uh you said you had a shout out? I do have a shout out. Um, I have a shout out to everybody that showed up Saturday to help with the chicken processing. It was a blessing. And it and was fun. nobody got hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Everything went really smooth, and I, I am so thankful. Yeah, so uh and this kind of brings us around to what the um subject is today is we want to talk a little bit about a couple of things. Uh we we butchered uh, Red Rangers, and then 
uh, John Pearson just did Cornish crosses the other day. Uh, thank and you, Reb, you got, I forgot what you got to have again. You have Red Rangers. What? Does what? Re, Re, Rev has a Red Ranger? Re, uh, yeah, I do. I have Red Rangers. Yes, sir. Okay, you haven't done. You haven't processed yours yet. No, no, they're not ready yet. Okay. But I did crosses last two batches of quarters crosses last year. Yeah. So, uh, uh, what I wanted to kind of bring up some interesting comments and observations. Um, so, and when we were processing the fifty birds, um, we had. Debbie's and John's birds, which are related to my birds, we just split them up and I grew uh, 25. They grew 25. They lost one. We both had 24 birds to process. Uh, their birds were definitely bigger than mine, but I was stingy on the food. <laughs> but it was kind of interesting as we had observations about sizes. I thought, well, I know that I was going to be a little bit lower, but I was substantially lower than their birds, yet they were the same birds. So, uh, Apparently, Steve Sparks needs to call Debbie and John and tell them that their their chickens are fat. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> why you that? saying my pigs don't have legs? <laughs> <laughs> Cooney Cooney is like I think I think they just roll around on their bellies. So the observation that I was hearing from the people that were cleaning the the birds um, is your birds were fattier and harder to clean inside and mine were less fat and easier to clean and uh, and in the cavity and, yeah. uh, and then you made an observation about size of pen so i'm going to let Sit you down. make comments of what you're thinking um some well, think I, observations i don't know if this is uh truth or not but what i've noticed is like he had his in a tractor we had ours in a p larger pen and i noticed when i had the chicks in the house they didn't grow as fast but the minute i put it out into the brooder pen they, they exploded. just exploded and so i'm wondering if they're confined like reptiles they grow to their area i wonder if chickens do the same thing Hmm. Uh, what, what, fish? <laughs> That's right, John. I was You're not supposed <laughs> to tell my secrets. <laughs> so yeah, so the, the the we don't know the answer to this. So anybody does have heard, but um, like like in my pond where I have koi koi fish, if you only have a couple of koi fish, those fish be, uh, will grow quite large. Mm -hmm. But if you have like a half a dozen or a dozen koi fish, they'll be half the size. They accommodate to their surroundings. So um, I thought it was a good observation, and I don't know the answer to it. But uh, yeah. if you had your uh, uh, um, birds in a, a more confined thing, which my chicken tractor is eight by eight by eight by four, four, and. Uh, and we moved along, you know, and they get moved moved in the grass, so they always had fresh grass. But, um, and you had them in a regular chicken coop, which yeah, is about a twenty by twenty. Yeah, so um, that yeah, uh, yeah, that's just the that's just the yard of it. Yeah. So, um, any of us that have come across anything on the internet or hear other uh, videos about it, I'd love to hear comments about that. Um, I've never heard. I never. Uh, I never wondered about that. I never heard that. Uh, uh, problem to have the same exact birds raised in two different ways. You guys are like scientists or something. Hey. Yeah, well, John, didn't you have the same with um, your your buddy that weren't yours? You got more meat than he did. I got a lot more than he did. Yeah, we had the exact same, you know, exact same batch. They came out of the exact box. We split the box right down the middle, and uh, in the in the course of and he actually had twenty four birds. I lost an additional than him i had uh, 23 but i had 63 pounds more than him yeah so yeah. How did wow he, where did he have his chickens his his tractor that he had uh was his i think his was strictly a feed issue if you ask me but oh. his, tra his tractor was i don't know mine's eight by eight you know his is uh I want to say it was six by four, 
but um, I think I think his had to wow. do with, I think his had to do with with feed um, more than more than the uh, surrounding. I don't know. I don't know if if eight weeks is enough time to adjust for your surroundings or not. Maybe it is. Um, I just know that that uh, he wasn't having it with the you know the twenty two percent meat bird feed. Uh, he did a few bags of it and said, I, I think I can do different. And, you know, his total, his total, uh, processed, uh, meat, uh, you know, bagged meat when it was all done was 24 birds and 99 pounds. And mine was, you know, 23 birds and about 162 and a half or 163 pounds. So, yeah. well, we did 24 mm. and ours was 136 pounds. No, nope, that's that that's good, and that's you know yeah. that's that's a good sized bird. Yeah, had, we, we had twenty three birds because I lost two birds. Yeah, I had mm -hmm. I had twenty three as well. Because so I lost I, one one that was baby and one a day before we processed. Yeah, that's weird. That's weird. He had a heart attack. <laughs> Probably saw you setting up that. I know that's what I was going to say. Camp and they, <laughs> Don't put me so, in that locker. Uh, so uh, with forty-eight birds that we were doing, we had quite a crew. We had several people from uh, our area, uh, including uh, John Smith was there from. Um, yeah, from, small uh, town. Small town that was tourists, um, but we had uh, some helpers. Uh, uh, Amy and her family from uh, Dragonfly Farms was there. A, what was and the gentleman who was helping? Who was the guy who was helping clean with you? Oh, that was Jim. That Jim. was a. Uh, they used to buy milk from Amy. That ah, was okay. the gentleman that we went over and helped process their birds. Yeah. So yeah, um, I I got it. And one of the observations I said in the video too is I think the hardest job during the process you have the dispatch of the birds, then you have a scalding. Then you have a um, we what we call the uh, the plucker, which is a, it's like a washing machine basically. It turns around and their feathers fall off. Uh, those processes are pretty easy, uh, but we hand it over to the, and then we uh, hand it over to the people that process uh, the innards and clean out the uh, the birds. Uh, those were the most tedious jobs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, is, uh, uh, and so. We only had two people on that station. I think in the future we have put three or four just because yeah. that was hard work. And they hardly left their station all day. Um, and then Sherry was kind of clean up or um, cosmetic kind of at the end. So she was working. She was the third person. And uh, But there, you three were uh, at your station like all the time. Like me and John got breaks all the time. <laughs> yeah, I finally said, I, we're done. We're taking a break. Well, this gentleman that was helping me, bless his heart, he's 70, 75 five years old. Yeah. Put put and us he, all the same. And he was doing his chickens and he was didn't have a plucker. And it took him what four days to do five. Five of them, I think. But and he's never done it before. And yeah, so I felt bad because he went home the next day and he didn't get out of bed. <laughs> I felt horrible. I kept telling him, go take a break. Go take, but I think he was trying to keep up with me. And I kept telling him, go take a break. And yeah, at the end, poor guy, he goes, do you mind if I quit for the day? I said, please do. <laughs> yeah, here, here yeah, in the we, right for sure. On yeah. his, we did 21 of his chickens in three in hours. Three hours. And he had the same as you, John, the Cornish cross. Uh, like Amy's kids, they were catching birds for us, and they would put them in the cones for us. and um, Letting them out of the cage and chasing <laughs> them. <laughs> yeah, that too. It was fun. It yeah. was fun watching them. Um, so uh, um, I, I, so uh, now you said that his birds, the guy you did last the week before, was Cornish crosses. Yes. Um, did you find a difference between a clean, huge, cleaning a, a huge Cornish cross difference. compared to our Red Rangers? Yes, huge. They were so much easier. I mean, How? The Red Rangers were? No. Gutting them and the, everything. The, the Cornish cross. They got so a big they were easier. Yeah. Um, 
the well actually ours there was a difference between ours too ours the bigger ones were hard to get to pull everything out where rob's were smaller birds and it came right out but yeah hmm. my hand is still sore from pulling pulling the guts out <laughs> that's a lot of birds but yeah rob's was easier than ours so the bigger they are it's like it stuck to their rib cage or something they ju it just wouldn't come out hmm. so yeah there was a big difference all the way around and uh what would you hey say rob i'm interested Go ahead. how did you get your chickens from your chicken tractor into that truck did you use a fishing net no yeah, actually we, we had um uh <laughs> John, uh, John Smith's wife actually helped us. So we have doors at both ends. You can open up the front completely and in the back, uh -huh. the back door. So um, John's wife, uh, Shelly, she uh, uh, took a net and was just kind of sp spooking the birds towards the back. And Sherry was just grabbing them and we were putting Keeping them up in a kennel. And we also have a, a bird carrier. And so we just filled it up that way and threw them in the truck and brought them over to Debbie's place, and um, that was one of the lessons learned. I know um, we we had to go catch, you know, and it would have been that way if it was at my place uh, too. We had to catch John's birds, and so that was time consuming. We had the time to do it though. Um, but if you're trying to make all the processes uh, right with you know with no with good flow, um, it'd be good to catch your birds ahead of time and then have them near the processing area where you could just net grab them at because uh, towards the end of the day, we were really moving through birds fast because um, we had them only a few feet away from us. And so as soon as one was dispatched, <laughs> they were grabbing another bird. And uh, um, yeah, you guys were going fast, but my, my yeah, seat we, was full. Yeah. We <laughs> filled like you guys up real up bad. Well, they so, were doing four at a time. So that's, that's kind of the next thing I wanted to bring out was like, uh, since John's done his bird, the, and you've done them last year, Rev. And then uh, mm -hmm. what we went through, uh, what do you think some of the lessons learned were this year? Well, one of the lessons for myself is is scalding temperature is critical. It's yes. really, really important. We and it would hurt you. to have two thermostats and, you know, or thermometers in, in the water in case you have one go bad or one's not reading right. Um, this, to me, this, uh, and, and not to, not to rush. Um, we, uh, started off, I had, uh, I was over at my buddy Cliff's place. Uh, I loaded up the birds into the back of my, I had a, a, a little pickup truck with a little camper shell on the back, little type of gem top thing. That was re all real, went real good and real easy. Rev had me scared. I thought it was going to be a nightmare, but it actually really was. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but you know, the um, they they get going so fast. Um, everybody's you know throw the bird in, you know, and they they started you know immediately just cutting heads off. And I said, what well, you know, and I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. But in the course of just a few minutes, if you if you aren't careful, you know, you can you can be down a lot of birds and do some damage to you know something that you want to keep in your freezer and eat, you know, for the next year. So, right. my, you know, uh, take your time, make sure that scalding water is good. And, and because did you guys have any that, that scalded too long or anything yep. like that? Because I, I mean, it, at, I the, at the end we had a new person come in that has never done it before. And I think we had two or three of them and he got the hang of it really quick. Yeah. But it, yeah. It, and it, that, it, that's it, expected it, learning. Yep. It doesn't take long to get out of hand. That's all. And so, yeah, it's, I, you know, I talked to, to Mindy when I got all done and I, I really appreciated all the help that, that we got in doing those. We did, we did, um, well, it was, uh, 20, 24 and 23. So we did 47 birds and it was a grand total of, uh, in four hours, we were, we were done with four, four and a half at the outside with cleanup. We were done with all of them, but, um, it, they went fast, but man, I told Mindy, I said, the next time I do that, I, I think I'm going to get my own uh, stuff. And I would almost rather do get 30 birds and do 15 a day almost by myself. Because if you, if you mess up a bird, 
at least I can say I messed up a bird, right. you know, and right. it was my fault and all that kind of stuff. But if somebody else does it, you know, they're just there trying to help, try, trying to do the very best they can. And they're, you know, it's all, you know, they're, they're being, you know, great people for coming out and volunteering and it. And it's, and it's a lot of fun, but you go sit there and go, Oh crap, there's another one. That's just going to be cut up and turned into fried chicken. You know, there, this, this one's not coming out of the roasting pan, you know, yeah. to feed well, the family. It's, we, we lucked out really good. everybody, everybody did an amazing job. The one, one thing though, is we were talking about it. We're thinking maybe do, five to 10 a year just to rotate the flock. Yeah, because ours, we we sold 10 of ours. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, we sold 10 of ours and it paid for the whole process, everything. Wow. Well, not the process. <laughs> the buying of the tools, it didn't. But yep. basically getting them, the dang shipping that I'm throwing a fit about, it basically paid for all that and the feed. So, yeah. Debbie hates some shipping, man. Oh man, I do. I do. <laughs> so one, thing I to point, one thing I wanted to point out that me and Dustin, when we were doing scolding and and uh, plucking, is uh, we had a, a slump with the, yes, uh, the they asked us to uh, uh, slow down and take a break while they caught up. So uh, while they're getting out the, so we had. Uh, about three or four birds in the cones processed uh, or dispatched, and they sat in the cones for a longer period of time than the other birds. Uh, and then when we said, when they all gave us the word to start going forward again, those four birds obviously you get more rig rigamotus mortis uh, in. Uh -huh. right, so when they went, we scolded them all that. When they went through the plucker. We noticed that they didn't clean up as well as the birds that are uh, dispatched and then immediately gone through the process uh, oh. because probably mm. the stiffness or the uh, or whatever uh, the the birds aren't flopping around enough in the uh, uh, spin. How long are we talk about? How long were they in the cone? Twenty minutes. Oh, not that long. Wow. Yeah. About five minutes. Yeah, but we, I mean, it, it was, uh, we noticed. Dang, that's we, wild. As soon as we got to birds, you know, uh, started dispatching again and, and getting our process back, to, uh, then it cleared up and the, bird, and the feathers were coming off a lot easier. Um, so that was the lesson learned is uh, um, don't leave your birds in the cone uh, too long before you put them through the pluck gene. So um, yeah. I, I think yeah, John, John the birds aren't as flexible. John What's gave that? us some great advice before we started too, since he had gone through it first, because we would have never thought of doing the dispatch and then dunking them in water to kind of clean that up and then putting them in the scholar. We would we wouldn't have thought of that. It just keeps yeah. the scalding water a little cleaner, a little longer. Oh, it, it kept yeah. it pretty clean. That's yeah. smart. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yeah. And then uh, do you guys have uh issues with any bones coming through the wings or anything like that nope. not one yeah. yes i think i th did now did you do did any, you? any sink well the only ones that i had issues with were the ones that the guys put in the plucker as a single bird instead of a double you know instead of two birds well we had the same problem with jim's is yeah. their wings the bones came through and he had the same kind of bird in fact it was breaking wings off yeah, we couldn't we couldn't do two birds at the same time. Takes too many amps. <laughs> oh, I see. There is. It was overloading my. Well, well, we were working off stitchy cords from a long ways away. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, we had to unplug that's some stuff. Big deal. Yeah, that's a big deal. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, but shout out to whoever invented the plucker, though. Man, that oh, thing is God. absolutely magic. Yeah. yeah. No kidding, no kidding. You know, it's kind of funny though. I was like, uh, because um, I didn't think you don't think much of it, but um, I think it was because you also had, um, I think he was using 16 gauge extension cords, but you yeah. know, we, he had to go a long distance anyway. So we had to shorten his uh, electrical cords as soon as we got it shortened up and stuff. Uh, the plucker had much more power, well, yeah. And so the, 
Uh, another lesson learned was amperage is, is uh, important to keep in mind when you're setting up your equipment. Well, next year, we're going to have power out there. In July, uh, we're having it done. You know, if you, if you don't, if you, uh, you guys have with, with RVs and stuff, you probably have access to, a, you know, to a small, do you guys have the, like the 2000 watt generators and things? Like oh, that? yeah. Yeah. Because pretty quiet. The garage. 2000 watts, you could bring it right up to it almost with no extension cord. <clears throat> yep. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. we have one. We had one, but we don't, we <laughs> hadn't taken it out of the box yet. <laughs> Because we got it for our vacation. We just haven't tested it or anything. <laughs> so yeah, we were trying to, yeah. Next year, we're having power. Because this July, we, we got somebody coming over to dig the trench so we can put water and electric out towards the barn. Nice, nice. Well, yeah, you guys that, that, get, it, get only a ditch. water in the winter is horrible. You know, you guys get a ditch, uh, get a ditch dug and, and give me a call. I'd love to come over and give you a hand. I'm calling right now. <laughs> oh. yeah. Debbie, are you doing that? What? <laughs> One <laughs> hand, ask, ask John. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, any, that, any that other? would be wonderful. Uh, we even uh, got a bed other? here for you. And your wife. I'd love to meet your wife. She's, she's, she's a sweetheart. She's great. Um, I'll tell you what, though. The only bird that I had that was under six pounds... When I went to bag it, I go, oh, this one is, it was uh, uh, five pounds, uh, like, I don't know, 13, 14 ounces, something like that. You know, we we're talking about breaking bones and stuff like that. It was missing a goddamn leg. I go, what? Wait a minute. <laughs> there's, only, there's only one drum drumstick on this thing. What happened? And, and the guy, <laughs> oh, it, it, it came off in the plucker. It's like, what? I mean, so where was, is it? <laughs> where is the leg? Yeah. Where's the leg? I, you know, you know, where's Rev? Where's the leg? Anyway, yeah. that was I don't know about that one. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh my so, gosh. So uh, uh any other lessons learned that you guys can think of during the uh processing pro uh process? Well, here we had to deal with the heat. I think we'll be a little bit more ready for the heat um this time, you know. Uh um it'll be the second week of july i think we're processing and uh last year you know we had a little we had a tent and all that kind of mess and uh you watch all the videos you know you get all the stuff but i mean it was hot and at the end of the day we were tired there was only four of us and uh and uh it was 25 birds you know um at a time and uh and it was it was hot we were exhausted you know and this year, like 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 John was saying earlier, this year we're we're not doing as much. We still got um, quite a few birds from last year in the freezer still. So I think we're only going to do one batch, and we may actually keep some of these um, to have some brown eggs because I don't have any brown eggs um, here on the farm. We only got white egg layers, um, leghorns. Um, so we're, so you know. We were, we were gung-ho last year. Not that we didn't need, need to be, you know. I'm glad that we have that much meat in the freezer. But uh, we're only going to do one round this year um, yeah. and, uh, and uh, see where we are, you know. Yeah, I, I figure if we just do maybe 10 a year, thin out the flock a little, like, you know, keep our regular layers, the ones that do really good. And the older ones, they just kind of go to freezer camp. Yep. It's not the worst idea I ever heard. The other thing I, uh, I what, think what? it's the worst idea I ever heard. Those are my chickens. <laughs> <laughs> I just I think thought that they're hers. <laughs> Another lesson learned I had was uh, I wore tennis shoes and I should have wore muck boots because you don't, don't realize, <laughs> you don't realize how much water is involved when you're doing the process. Um, so We had hoses for every single station. Yep. And then, of course, we're in Central Oregon, so you know a lot of times water will pool, and then and then hesitate, and then it seeps into the ground. So uh, basically, you know, we might have the plucker going, and we have water going, so we'll make a puddle for ourselves, and our feet are getting so, um, <laughs> getting my tennis shoes are soaked. Um, <laughs> but you know, ten minutes, ten minutes later, all that goes into the ground. But it's the nature of our ground here, but. 
Um, so my mistake was I didn't wear my muck boots. So that's another thing is that I would do different is different mug boots and also not let birds sit in the cone too long. And, and uh, it, it was really amazing. By noon the next day, you could not tell that we did anything out there. Oh, that's good. I had that place yeah, it was completely cleaned up. When I was do, doing the birds inside, he was out doing the outside. And yeah, didn't know there was a barbecue party back there or nothing. Wow. <laughs> there weren't cans thrown all over the place and all that kind no, of stuff? No, there was. I would pick them all up. No, there wasn't. <laughs> We had adults here. They put them in the garbage. <laughs> I'll tell you what. It's a little. It's 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 strange over here on on my end, just for the fact that, you know, I get up in the morning and I, you know, get ready for work. I go I go to work pretty dang early and I go outside and I, I kind of enjoy the morning ritual of going and feeding the pigs and moving the birds and doing yep. all that stuff. And it's like, man. <laughs> Now what, what I, are you gonna do? Yeah, it's um, you know I, I I able I'm able to go out in the garden and see if anything else is sprouted or that kind of stuff, you know. But kind of boring. Yeah. I I'm dreading next week because you got, now I don't have to rush out there and feed the pigs. No, you got the rabbits. Oh, that's easy. It takes all of about two minutes. I, to I can't say that because I've gotten hard because. Now that I've got overweight pigs, I got to go out there and weigh them on a little scale. Well, uh, you, oh sure. my God! Have here we go. go. Here we go. <laughs> and they're all. I got to give them. A, I am not coming over to help you with that, Rob. This is this is Somewhere the guy that day. voluntarily followed a pig with a mason jar. I don't want to hear right. anything about exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, a scale is not a big deal to this guy. Yeah. Well, I then then they get Sparky to sit in one of those straps that that wobble you know that wobbles you know to lose weight <laughs> really hard to get them in that thing but uh, what you do is you put some uh lettuce in your back pocket and just walk and run down. and run <laughs> small dirt hunter says oh keto diet <laughs> <laughs> i think you need to give them those gummies <laughs> so by the way so tomorrow uh this video is going to be a cooking video and I did something that uh, uh, you guys, uh, it, it'll look kind of funny, but taking a tenderloin, a pork tenderloin, and you know, those are kind of round and tubular. You know, if you cut those and turn them into uh, slices, and then you got to kind of pound them out to make them flat, and then wrap them, wrap it with uh, bacon, and then um, and season it too and stuff. So I made bacon wrap tenderloins, and they so were good. amazing. <laughs> So anyway, so that'll be in tomorrow's video, and we also did um, um, uh, one of our chickens in the Traeger, and so uh, um, anyway, and it came. It was really good. Was it good? Yeah, it was. Uh, uh, I did a um, spatchcock. I just cooked it in there. I used Traeger uh, chicken rub. Super good. Super good. Yeah, that way. Any difference that you can tell between that and, and store-bought chicken or not really? Um, tastes like chicken. Tastes like chicken. Yeah, it, it, it's pretty much it tastes like chicken. Um, I think you can, taste the, you can taste a little difference. Um, a le, a, less, a less, less, less bland taste. There's a little bit of something in it that uh, makes it uniquely more chickeny, but... Uh, uh, but uh, as opposed to store bought, where it seems like it's kind of it can be quite bland. He's so uh, Debbie, Debbie's broth came out a whole lot different. Oh yeah. Oh, really? so, how so? Yeah. It's like dark, dark. Oh, yeah. Grab one. Hold on. Yeah, because when I did that from the store bought, it almost looks like clear liquid. Yeah. These are beautiful. Oh wow! wow. That. That looks good. Now, don't that look like broth? Yeah, the store bot does not look like that. I agree. Oh, in the in the bedroom, I'll show the the difference. I was shocked. Hmm. I like to. I, I should. Uh, we did. We were making. I have to get you uh, your process of how you make your broth. I put it in a slow cooker and let it cook overnight. Just I invite put, her over for a day to show you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I save all my onion 
you know, the outside of the onions and green peppers. I save all of that. That's the one from store bought. Yeah, chicken. this is the one from store bought. Oh my gosh, you, you really can see the difference. Wow. Yeah. I was shocked and I did oh. exactly the same thing. But yeah, it looks like clear liquid. Hey. It has the chicken flavor to it. <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> this is the other thing you said. I got the right cup today. Everybody show your cups. I don't drink coffee. <laughs> What's John? <laughs> what do you mean you don't drink coffee? Drink coffee. I'm sorry, Debbie. Don't, he just, don't... Oh my goodness. He just drink cider all day. Drink cider. That's what I would do. From me. Oh, by the way, I tried his cider. Uh, well, not apple, not the apple one, but I tried the plum in it, and the other one was blueberry. Apple. It's and still on base. Oh, yeah. I had apple in it? Oh, yeah. Delicious. And he was like, well, it apple might be a little dry me. for you. And I was like, perfect. Anyway, uh, so good stuff. So uh, um, someday he'll actually give me a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what, that season's coming up. The trees have a great fruit set on them this year. Yeah, I'm when are we when are we going camping down there? Yeah, you <laughs> but you gotta give me a little bit of advance notice because that that little area that's I got a great little grass area out front, but I normally let it go dry because it's just a lot to, to water. But you, you don't guys have to water, you don't have to water it for us. We live the in the desert. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Water. Yeah, you don't have to water it for us. We live in the desert. <laughs> I don't know why he waters it. Half the trees that were over in this on his side of the mountains were all burnt down anyway. <laughs> oh. oh, yeah, that was a bad year. <laughs> I'm gonna take some pictures though of the trees on my property. I'm gonna send them to Rev. I'm gonna see if he's okay with them. He's gonna show. Oh yeah, I, w I wish he would. I wish he would. <laughs> he's gonna show you they're small. I got some trees here, Rev. I got <laughs> they got trees. a tumbleweed in their yard. I know. <laughs> I know. Hey, we've been watering. We got some green. So, so I do want to <laughs> We've been up. watering. That's funny. I want to follow up on a comment from uh, John Smith. Um, so uh, I, I found, I, and I was almost going to make a whole video on this, but so he came here and had a chance to see the animals and, and, and try some of the food and all that stuff. And, and our what we call normal hospitality and stuff, but um, somewhere along the line, I don't know if it was at my house or over at uh, uh, Debbie and John's, but he made a com uh, comment that um, he goes, "I watch your show, Rob, and I know he watches our videos." And he made the comment of, "You guys always talk about community and working together, but I, I didn't." comprehend it and uh, as well until the week uh, this weekend when he was down here and actually saw our community in action how we kind of always kind of interact with each other help each other um to be successful and and share and all that so um so it kind of I, I guess it was like <laughs> we're not we're trying our best to communicate why we have this podcast and why we have the shows and why we do what we do is we want to create community and, and, and everybody's involved in it in their own level and stuff. But um, I just found it interesting that we, even though we talk about it all the time, it's hard to comprehend what true community is until you actually see it. And sometimes I have to tell people is you have to use your faith just like your religion, uh, your faith um, of knowing what it could be. And when you got it, it's amazing. It was truly amazing. And uh, uh, in fact, there's, I was waiting for John to make a comment. Let's see what he said. Uh, your community is amazing. Gives me a sense of hope for the future. And wow. that's exactly that's what, mm -hmm. what kind of message we want to give. But how do you, you, you know, can't as we're trying to build that community, is, is well, how do you let people know that this is what it could be. Yeah. The, the thing of it is too, is you want to also extend it out beyond Terrebonne. Yeah. Right. Anybody. I mean, we're, I, I feel like I have community with North Carolina. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah that's what yes. I'm thinking. So, <laughs> that's right. That, that's, that's the, that's the thing. Not only is it local, but it, 
but but what what you're shooting for and 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 the reason why I watch to begin with is because it's a draw it it draws you in and 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 uh, I th I think that's a good thing. You have a good group of people. So hey, you know, he yeah. was uh, saying that we share things. Well, this year John and I are sharing a half a pig. There is a couple we just met through his son's friend that lives here in Redmond. And his job has been just like this, up and down, up and down. He works at the mill. And we're going to give him a quarter of a pig. And then there's a couple families on the ranch that are in need, and we're going to split the rest with them. So that's, to me, what communities do for each other. And that sounds good. Heck yeah, no, that's great. That's great. Yeah, we had the makings of one. You know, I'm really excited about that. Here, where we're at, there, you know, we have a half. It's a half a mile back to the paved road um, from where we're at, and there's only five um, households down this road. One of them owns like a hundred acres, you know, and then our our eleven acres, and then um, there's some young girls that own a farm next door called Elysian Farms, and they're mostly a horse farm, but they have goats. And uh, they're trying to get, you know, gardening going on. There's a one local here is like one of those locals you just love to have next door because he knows everybody around and everything there is to know. And, you know, and one other and one other family who who's some kind of amazing gardener. I, I can't even talk to the guy because I can't understand what he's talking. I don't even have to time. I don't know if he's speaking English or not. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? He's, he's like a super genius. So we have the makings of a great community right back here on our street. It's just everybody's kind of fresh with a, with each other. Three of the households have, haven't been here even two, two years yet. Um, but I'm really excited about it though. Um, there's some good people um, right down this way. And, and like, and like John was talking about to expand out, like I, I, my company's nationwide and I know one state where I'd be, where I wouldn't be too nervous about finding myself in, you know what I mean? That'd be Oregon. I'd be like, okay, send me to Oregon. You know what I mean? That I'd be less nervous going there than anywhere else. That's for sure. Or than a lot of places. That's for sure. You know? Yeah. So yeah, you're right, John. You're right. Nice. Shane's giving me trouble in here. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually. Hey, Rev, real quick. What are your pigs doing? Your little piglets. Oh man, yeah. they're doing great. Uh, they'll be, uh, they're like, what are they? Two and a half weeks old now. Uh, yeah, so nine oh, males, oh, three man. females. Are they nine. running around like crazy <laughs> little pigs? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know, it's the three females are all white, pure white. I don't know if they're albino or anything like that, but they're, they're just kind of odd. All the males were black and white. Um, but the three females are all white. And a lot of the pigs, it's kind of a mix, have the uh, the waddles because my both my oh, female wow. has the waddles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So a lot of them have the waddles, um, and they're doing great. I, I still have them. We have them hemmed up with the mama in a stall, um, um, just for now. You know, I haven't in introduced them to the hot wire yet, um, but uh, but they're doing great, and they're they're getting a little bit more used to us. They were coming up to us tonight and and letting us pet them and stuff like that. And Mama's a good mama. She hasn't been she hasn't been mean to us or anything like that. She makes monkey noises, you know, but that's yeah. about it. Um, we're we're a little bit concerned because we think that the other sow or the other guilt, I should say, is she's filling out on the bottom too now. So we think we might be. Uh, it might be Pork Mountain out there, you know, real soon. Um, <laughs> yeah, you Junior. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, and you, you know, around here, I don't, I, it, you know, it might be a little different there, but there's a lot of pigs around here. It's hard to get rid of them. You know what I mean? So, uh, so we're gonna, we're kind of in it. Yeah, we're we're kind of in a situation. We're kind of in a situation, yeah, but uh, we might be anyway. But they're doing great. They're doing great. We're do what? Start what buying is, some freezers now. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. Yep. Rev, what is your plan for the pigs? Or do you have one yet? Well, well, we we were pro we think we might be raising one of them for a guy here in town who lives in town. Um, and I got I got a guy that wants two of them, I do believe. 
Um, so we're, we're trying to sell most of them, really. We, we might keep one for ourselves, um, but we'll see about that. But we're, we're, we're probably, especially if the other one's pregnant, we're, we're just looking to get rid of as money as, as we can, you know? <laughs> That's yeah. the scary part. It's getting stuck with <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's a good problem to have, you know? <laughs> I think I, I got a uh, dilemma with mine because it's like I got to see, make sure that Sparky's doing all right. So I got him with Maggie, but she's overweight. So I put her with Zelda. She probably will take. But then I got the new one, Annie, that legendary escapee. I, I want to breed her because she's from a whole different um, um, set of pigs over in the East Coast. And then Steve Sparks um, offered me his sow. That's this East Coast sow. Um, and uh, uh, so I, I told him I'd be interested in that. So she may be coming to me pregnant. <laughs> So Dang. I may go from like zero piglets at all to like um, thirty. Yeah, so I may have the same problem. <laughs> so well, you're, we'll you're set up for it physically, maybe not mentally. Yeah, so we're in much better shape. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so we have uh, our feral. You know, we got our feraling houses up now and all that. So we're we're pretty. I just uh, maybe uh, what I don't like is the the, the cost of feed. Yeah. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it'd be interesting how that goes. Um, and uh, I need to. Hey, it's like people like I haven't seen you advertise much about your eggs. Well, I got tons of eggs, and I haven't posted on the egg exchange. It's like, but as a change, I still got eggs, guys. <laughs> just because I haven't advertised. <laughs> anyway, so I guess I need to do the same with the pigs. I need to kind of start posting. I did post to my. Nice. <laughs> Um, <laughs> well, if mine ever start laying, I'm going to have more than we need for sure. <laughs> you need to get a freeze dryer. I only got four of my birds laying right now, but when those other ones start, they're all going to start at the same time. Yep. I'm I think gonna have like 30 around, eggs a day. What am I going to do with those? I think one of the smartest things we've ever done for our homestead is uh, also picking up a freeze dryer. So yeah. uh, when you get inundated with eggs and stuff, and then you know you don't have to worry about wasting them or anything, is you take forty-eight of them and, and you just put them in the freeze dryer, and now you got you know uh, eggs basically for twenty-five years. <laughs> hey, yeah. Rob, when you when you do that, Rob, you just like kind of scramble them up on the on the tin on the on the pan, and then pop them yep. in. And yeah, right. so uh, each pan can hold you about. Freeze them first. Actually, well, you um, you can you can freeze them or you can let the machine do it. So uh, so Sherry will blend them up like that, scrambled eggs, mm -hmm. um, and then you just pour them into the sheets and freeze the sheets or let the machine freeze them and then start the freeze drying process. And when it's all done, it's like peanut butter brittle. And you just take that, break it up, and put it in a blender and turn it to powder and uh, seal it um, with a uh, vacuum seal it. And, uh, yeah, 25 years, you have eggs. <laughs> when, when you uh, – when you ha have you processed uh, – not processed, but eaten some of the freeze-dried eggs then? How, how do, what's the texture, consistency, or what's it like? Exactly the same. Really? You will not know that they were freeze dried. You can't tell. You can't Although tell the difference. We have found out that dehydrated eggs are not good. <laughs> What's that, John? Dehydrated I, eggs are not good. I, I, I beg to differ. Huh? No, I don't like. Oh no, dehydrated, dehydrated not freeze dried. Yeah, okay. dehydrated. Yeah, they didn't turn out so well. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, this they is the key. They turned out slimy. But we got that. a cute note here from a small town tourist where he says, side note, Shelly now wants to plant strawberries and tomatoes, which is Good too bad you, because Shelley. right after Shelly left and they uh, went on uh, uh, headed home, uh, the strawberries started turning. <laughs> so we got strawberries now. <laughs> and yeah. we are actually getting the Amish paste into the uh, greenhouse now. So that's starting. So, uh, uh, yeah, so... It's getting there. I'm getting my transplants. So the ones I started as babies, they were just too small to put in the Dutch buckets, but they're just barely big enough to get in there now. So we're 
<laughs> it was just shoving them in the greenhouse and let them go. But um, I am excited to try the Amish paste this year. Yeah, me too. And you know, I was telling them uh, I was really lucky. You know, I lived in Arizona for two years, so I got into kind of growing on um, in beds and stuff there. And they and they rent their house, so we wanted to find a practical way that they could use something there. And if, if they have to move on to a different place, they could disassemble it and take it with them. And yeah. so, uh, anyway, uh, I'm There's hoping. There's a lot of things out there. Yeah. So the uh, I actually um, Home Depot has this little kind of a thing you can kind of put pieces together where you can take two by twelves and then put them in insert blocks and uh, assemble it. And so, uh, uh, and you could easily take it apart, take that dirt, um, and uh, take it with you. <laughs> Amazon has wonderful ones too. That's where I yep. got all of mine. And then uh, John's gonna give a give that Dutch bucket a shot. I, I can't wait. So even if you only do two or three of them, it's like it's amazing. And uh, of course, uh, Rev, you're doing the um, your tomatoes. DWC. Uh, what what's uh, using um what's the process of hydroponics? DWC. DWC. What's it stand for? Deep water culture. I think. Oh, okay. I think it's that's what it's used for. <laughs> yeah, I went. I went blank. There's a, another name for it. For, <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah. they're doing good. They're doing good too. Our beans started uh, started uh, coming out the other day. We were super happy about that. I got a mm -hmm. I got a broccoli in there the size of a softball right now. <laughs> nice, sweet. sweet. Yeah, yeah. It's doing good. It's doing good. We're, we're real happy with that. Yeah, the uh, tomatoes that I planted that I bought pre planted, uh, I put them in the Dutch buckets and they just they took right away. And so they're they're growing. I can almost see them how much they're growing every day. So, uh, yeah, so it's uh, wow. it's nice to see that. But uh, I'm glad we're a great influence with John. Um, and, you know, we and I explained to him before is we're trying to show people that even though we may have property or anything like that, we want to show you people with little houses, little lots, whatever, uh, apartments, uh, whatever, that you can do some form of, of, uh, of uh, growing food. And that's what we're really trying to pass on, not trying to do acres of it. So, and and you really yeah. don't need acres, <laughs> you know. No. You don't need so much. No, you don't. I mean, I bet you we're lucky to use one, well, maybe half of our five acres, mm -hmm. and, and that's pushing it. The, the other, I have probably two acres we haven't even touched. Uh, then we cleared it out a little bit, but there's nothing well, growing. Only no animals, nothing. Ours. What's that? We we only use half of ours, and we only have two and two and a half acres. We yeah. just have it spread out. Yep. So uh, anyway, um, I hope we're a good influence on the community and people that watch us, and uh, we uh, we hope we inspire people living in the city and living in the outskirts of the city, grow for some food or find a couple of maybe raise a couple of chickens, maybe just hens or something, and. Uh, yeah, I got roosters. You... <laughs> hey Rob, before we go, before yeah. we go, uh, me and my wife, me and my wife bought two new animals today, and we're gonna Ooh. unveil them tomorrow on Sweet. our Instagram and Cranberry underscore Creek underscore Farm, and uh, it'll be about uh, six o'clock normal people time. So uh, um, be there for that, y'all. Six o'clock. I wanted to squeeze that one in there. Sorry, Rob. Yep. Uh, make sure that maybe you can aim some pictures uh, to me through uh, uh, through the Thank messaging, you. and I can you. I, I will. Post, I will. I'll I'll post some pictures uh, when we do the show next week. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Uh, whatever they are, your mystery animals. Whatever they are, I'll let you know here in a couple minutes. He's got guns. All right, guys. <laughs> well, we're right, we're getting to the end of the show. Uh, uh, some reason I had to change. Uh, go to a different ending. Because uh, YouTube, my last two shows, I've been using the same song for five years, which is called uh, the, the little music you hear when we do the ending. And they're uh, catching it as a problem with the copyright, which is a royalty free song. So my last. Two, so, so we write it back and, and uh, we do a dispute and we'll probably win and it'll be fine. But until then, I'm not going to go through any more disputes. So I got a different. I put the Ranger Rob song 
on this one. So it'll be different music. But anyway, guys, I want to wa uh, thank everybody for watching. we got to wrap it up here. I hope everybody has a great summer. Grow some food. Get out there. Go go butcher a chicken just for the heck of it. <laughs> <laughs> Time's well, up. Well, and I want to thank the panel very much for showing up here. And uh, got everybody, have a great day. Thanks so much. Congrats. Congrats.